I'm plugging through the Agora's Nexus. We need the whole community connected. We're the alternative collective. Self sufficient and effective. Sell the rug from Hey guys, Gorus Nexus Podcast. I'm Daggerist, joined as usual by Jeremiah Harding. What's going on, brother? How you doing? Yo, looking well. well. I mean, it's it's going better for me probably than you because I don't live in fucking America's dick down there getting <laughs> wet. So, um, but like the fire here is the fires that we discussed in a previous podcast. Those have died down. So the air is much clearer and I can run more easily without feeling like I'm breathing fire th- through a knife. Um, so uh, but you have other problems. You have the opposite problem. We had fire over <laughs> here and you have water. So which is really funny since I live on the cool side of the country. So um, brother, if I could send you some rain, I would. <laughs> yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> uh just a reminder to everybody i guess cause, right just like swap um so just a reminder to everybody uh before we get started that we have a subscribe star we have a donate page we got the uh, the fundraiser page and we've got uh agris nexus seeds uh so feel free to uh or not agris nexus Agri sacred <laughs> i always fuck that up so you can use nexus at agris sacred seeds um and they will support us, uh, and you can also get uh, your garden so that you can be more based than the losers who won't have uh, access to food in the apocalypse. Yeah, just um, use code NEXUS. You'll get 20% off, and then the uh, NEXUS will get a 20% donation as well. So um, help help both y'all out. Uh, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, man, it was uh, – I got to say, dude, it was a little crazy. Uh, but we ended up coming out pretty okay compared to a lot of people. Um, our property itself ended up not holding a lot of water. Uh, it hasn't rained since the hurricane, and it's actually been very nice and cool and pleasant. But, like, we had, like, roads flooded right by us. Our neighbor lost a cow. We lost a few dozen chickens. Um, overall, pretty good, I suppose. But down Said in, the like... the goat house tipped over? Yeah, our goat house tipped over, which... I was concerned about that. How does that, that even work? It, it's it's basically built like a cube. You know, imagine like a six by six by six cube. And uh, we had it buttoned up oh, really the, good. I, those numbers I, aren't good. Yeah. I, but, uh, it's more like five and a half. I, so if that if that eases your, your, uh, see, your mind But you're storing all. a goat in <laughs> six by six by six. So you're Baphomet. You're, you're with the Illuminati. Anyway. Three ahead, goats. Sorry. I don't know if that makes a difference, but three goats, which well, sounds the, more numerical. The hand yeah. signal. You, you, you just did the hand signal. This is three sixes. That's evil. Oh, You're that evil. Totally. An We're on to you. So, um, so yeah, it uh, it tipped over, but it, it could have been worse. I thought I had it anchored down, and I guess I didn't. So, you know, I'll anchor it down. Our home that we've had here for about two years, you know, it's a mobile home, but it's supposed to be like 160 mile an hour wind rated. We got to give it a good test. So it yeah survived just fine. So that's good. A uh, skirt underneath got a little uh, a little dinged up, but no big deal. Uh, there are a lot. Yeah, of you people... know, I I saw this I saw this Sorry, tweet where somebody showed like a picture of the perspective from inside a building, and like the 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 swampy ass Florida water, like contaminated by all the fucking Walmart that's concentrated in that state. Um, like it's it's like flubbing around outside this window but the window and is intact and the inside is dry and it's like floor to ceiling windows and the person's like you know all this person has to do is it like all this window company has to do is show this picture for the rest of their <laughs> life and they don't need any other ads mm-hmm. uh, it's it's crazy the place is more like on the coast to get the storm surge you know where the water just comes up uh it's just it it is insane the amount of like damage that it does and you just have to like accept that it's going to happen someday you know if you live there i guess like living next to a volcano or something too but i feel like the hurricanes the volcano it might be hundreds of years right the hurricane it's like it's gonna happen in your lifetime a couple times it's 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 kind of rough i'm very in the center of the state uh so we ended up getting a lot of a lot of rain and everything there's like some pastures that if you didn't know it was a pasture you think it was a lake but it's it's drying up around us 
so it, it hasn't well, been too bad. We were without power for about three or four days. Well, that's that's how you get bogs. So are any of these people going to start investing in rice? Uh, probably not. <laughs> not a big rice. Uh, you know, I think in North Florida they actually do grow rice. If I'm not mistaken, I think yeah. they're starting to grow uh, to grow some rice up yonder. But uh, well, and and really you know what's be- funny it, is that most of Japan's rice comes from California now. <laughs> that is kind of funny. Yeah. But um, Japan's a little so, mountain. And, and, I didn't know they, they grew a lot of their own rice anyhow. Yeah, there, there's rice paddies like in most East Asian countries. Um, okay. Because what you do is you cut a flat area into the mountain. And mm. like then you have draining with the water over several flat areas. And you just go Harrison. through the rice fields like that. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. Yeah, I feel you like they do for yeah. tea. So, I'm but, sorry, what like, were you going to say? Okay, so... What, what okay let me first ask you because i hate him and i think he's a piece of shit what did you think of ron DeSantis's disaster management uh i don't know I, I i don't know i didn't pay enough attention to the details i guess i mean nothing nothing happened here but we don't really need need much to our power company you know a lot of it's funny we were actually out of town like a couple weekends ago now the week before the hurricane time has been really weird uh but the week before the hurricane we were out of town came home we're home for two days and hurricane hit we're coming back from tennessee and there were just so many power trucks you know coming into florida you know already now i don't know if that's the thing the governor does or just something power companies do amongst each other you know or how all that works but you know a lot of people mobilize and move into the state ahead of time it's uh you know it's, it's kind of impressive in itself i don't think that you know, I don't think I need to tell you guys that I think that markets and stuff can handle that just fine. I don't really think we need a big government action to make make things like that happen. Uh, you know, obviously, power generation is a huge business with a lot of money behind it, and you would have every incentive in the world to get it back on as quickly as possible. I'm very, just from like a human standpoint, I'm always very impressed. Uh, and I don't know what the word is, but I'm very impressed with the way that people just come in and get it done you know <laughs> like when when stuff like this happens you know i i know people who are like linemen or whatever and they i mean they're they're up to their necks in water you know fording you know whatever it's it is really dangerous it's you know i don't do that kind of work it is very impressive and i've got a lot of respect for that kind of stuff and just the <laughs> the the smaller stuff even just like people who just move products into areas you know one thing that you know Liberty folk to like talk about a lot is like price gouging laws, you know, and of course economics, yeah. behind, like why price gouging doesn't actually like exist, and you know what would motivate me to load a trailer full of supplies and bottles of water and drive three hundred miles and sell it, you know, would be <laughs> sell it for more money and the people would be willing to buy it, and it helps everybody, and you know, government actively hinders all those all those processes. Uh, another big one is uh like repairs and stuff after the after a storm like especially the county i live in like they are very vigilant after a natural disaster there's extra laws and penalties if you get caught doing like home repairs without permits or without the proper licensing or being a contractor which just means that people have blue tarps in the roof for five years because they can't get it fixed because it has to be done by you know one of the approved roofing companies etc here's where i can actually have a little bit of static with some libertarians Mm -hmm. because I do believe price gouging is real and Mm -hmm. a problem because, okay, in an isolated circumstance, like in, in like some far off anarchist future, maybe you could make a case for it. Right. But like in the present, the common person is just as affected by the state as everything else. And, you know, let's say Martha down the street lost everything, you know, and doesn't have the money for um, basic necessities. And the basic necessities that were cheap are now no longer cheap because people uh, are bu- buying o- over the like amount that they need so that they can profit off of the disaster. Mm-hmm. Um, and she uh, and she can't afford like basic food. She's going to be on a shoestring budget for the next like 
you know, three or four weeks at least. And that's if her home didn't get destroyed to begin with. And she doesn't just need a homeless shelter and also assistance, um, you know, and and that's also to say prior to that the government didn't like already fuck her out of a bunch of things like they didn't hyper regulate her business to get it shut down. They didn't, um, you know, uh, th- they didn't start a war that caused gas prices to go up so she couldn't afford the commute. They didn't, um, you know, centrally regulate uh, to the point where uh, she like her her business had to downsize uh, because they were like sending so much of their work overseas that they could no longer uh, justify having that particular operations center up or something like that. There's so many things. Let's say her husband was a victim of police brutality and they don't have a breadwinner in the home now because she was a single stay at home mom or she, she was a stay, a stay at home mom. And now she's a single stay at home mom. Like, and, and this is just Martha. What about Ken, who was was beaten by the cops and is now in the hospital on hospital bills and just getting out and, you know, has to live his life crippled because of the way the cops beat him? Uh, I think that just considering it from the perspective of, yeah, they're doing a service by bringing it to another place anyway, isn't looking at the multifaceted nature of like all the oppression that exists in the world and how this world is geared to fuck with people like state capitalism, uh, as described by Murray Rothbard or, um, you know, corporations as fascist entities of the state, um, imitations of the state and not the market, as Konkin would put it. Um, you know, you don't have to be a communist or, you know, syndicalist or mutualist or any of these leftist ideas to understand that price gouging can be a very bad thing. Um, and to also recognize that these resources, um, you know, could be better utilized than by the kind of person who would buy them at like huge costs like that, you know, and maybe um, instead of price gouging, people should have more local um, sort of solutions anyway way like decentralized mutual aid things uh collective food bunkers where like you can go there in times of disaster and pick certain things up that everybody donates to on a regular basis uh to keep it to keep it running like a giant pantry that people can all go to things like that would be a lot better for the common person than a price gouger going to walmart buying all the toilet paper and saying hey you want to wipe your ass you got to come to me um that's not good for anybody, I would say. I, I'm, I I have a strong rub with libertarians who say that it is fine. And I think that those are the sorts of people who don't care about poor people. And when you bring them up, they, they, they either say stop being poor as though that's a universal solution or they just say fuck the poor. Like some of them just say that. So uh, I, I feel like it's another example of like, you know, libertarians being callous capitalists and being bad for their own messaging and goals. Uh, like we could okay. be demonstrating that there's like concrete action we could be doing to actively help people that the state would never even consider or be prepared for, but instead we're defending price gouging. I, I think that's the wrong approach entirely. Fair enough. Let me, uh, let me say a couple things on that if I can. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. You're um, so uh, some definitely very valid points. And so there's one thing that is obviously very, uh, how am I trying to say this missed a lot of times when it comes to like libertarian, let's say economic theory is there's a, uh, I, I love in the big Lebowski when he says, no, you're not wrong, Walter, you're just an asshole, you know? So mm-hmm. there, there's times. Of course, where it's like, I oh, am that asshole like right? all the time. No, 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 so. no, 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 no. I'm not even talking about you here, but like, let's say, okay, so like, um, <laughs> let's say in the sense of like, like a price gouger, like what's somebody who, oh, there's going to be a disaster. Uh, they run to the local Walmart, like you said, buy all the toilet paper and sell it back to the local community and inflated at an inflated rate is obviously being a huge asshole. And while it might not be like a technical violation of non-aggression principle or what the fuck ever, it's not okay right um whereas i can definitely see a difference between somebody 
you know, at their own expense from another area that isn't at a shortage or something because of a disaster, buying it, bringing it in and being compensated for that, you know, uh, fairly, you know, and making some dough off of it. I have no problem with that whatsoever. I think the people who receive those products who might need them, you know, would be grateful. Definitely true that ideally not needing those products is, you know, the, the way to go. People have a tendency to to wait till the last minute, just look at like generator sales before, uh, before this store, you know, like they were literally bringing in semi truck loads to like Home Depot and they're gone in hours, you know, people weren't prepared for this kind of thing already, which is an, an unfortunate reality of what people do. The kind um, of person like we talked about in the other fucking episode where they're like, I'm coming to your house. No, the fuck yes. you aren't. Yes, exactly. You know, so um, so obviously moving supplies in areas where they're needed um, and it's a to be a market based thing. And that, I, you know, I think is good. But there are definitely certain things of people who can be real assholes or unnecessarily raise prices. I think one of the big beef is having the laws against the price gouging, because we get a lot of it whenever there's like a, a storm coming here where all the, you know, real um, real Bernie Sanders voting friends of mine, you know, they're here's the number. If you see any price, you know, they're just call the cops on any local business because the, you know, you think the price is too high or whatever, you know, uh, then we get in the goofy things. Okay. A case of water costs two fifty. an individual bottle of water costs, you know, $2 in the thing. So if you sell them package different, you know, so there gets to be all sorts of silly things like that. And it's really frustrating. Uh, and it's, it's, it's just stupid. Um, so, th- so that kind of, yeah, stuff. like, I'm, so, so just to be clear, for all the ANCAPs who probably are rapidly frothing at the mouth of the things that I already said, <laughs> I'm not saying that there's not considerable risk in some cases, mm-hmm. and that some, you know, some reward shouldn't be allotted. What I am saying is, like, especially in this, you know, like state capitalist economy, like people. They need to be cognizant of their effects long term. And if it seems like you don't give a fuck now, they're going to have no reason to help you smash the state and give a fuck later. So if you're not explaining to people why the prices are that high and the only thing you're doing is making the prices that high, then it shouldn't be a surprise when people who already weren't prepared don't understand why the prices were that high. And, you know, also the prices are a lot of the time pricing in the first place, <laughs> you know, yeah. very poor economic understanding of what a price but is. Like, even even in that case, like they, they they probably like, you know, a lot of these gougers, they're not looking to make a bare minimum profit. They're looking to make a lot of money. They're mm-hmm. looking to make it worth their while, um, not just enough to cover costs and expenses like that's why it's called gouging is because you you can really dig into somebody with that if if they need what you have and you know it's not like they they went out and procured these resources it's not like they went to a water source and and bottled that water themselves or made the bottles themselves in order to bottle that water they got it from a corporation who already stole it from somebody else so it's like you know the ethical implications start to waver once mm-hmm. you realize how the like sort of the the heritage of the product like and the sort of additional heritage of having been price gouged to begin with for that water that water should have just been free and flowing through a river instead it was dammed up and bottled to begin with um, and the fact that it wasn't flowing through a river meant that a lot of people didn't have water. They needed to move to a city um, because the water had been redirected to a Walmart shelf rather than running through a natural area. So they needed to move closer to where the where the things had been moved. So they moved closer to where the things had been moved. Urban isolation happened. Then urban sprawl happened. Um, in order to broaden the thing, so there was even less green area because there was more like you know pavement and buildings and all this stuff like sort of compounds to create like this weird like corporate fascist human virus that constantly like goes to an area fucks it up and expands to another area to fuck it up instead of leaving things the way they worked fine before you know so i mean 
there's like a lot of issues there that aren't just explainable away by, you know, they're, they're trying to break even because a lot of these people are not trying to break even they're trying to break more. Yeah. Yeah. Like I mean, if you I'll ask me the, the fact breaking, that the, nothing else more, I mean, <laughs> um, well, if you yeah, ask like me, I, a lot of these people that originally were price gouging the water, like Nestle price gouges as a matter of business. Sure. You know, before I go on a tirade against bottled water, and it's ironic that you might have noticed I'm drinking from a bottle of water. I've refilled that bottle of water like a half a dozen times. So, you know, we don't know too much, but the uh, amount of like people only drink water out of a damn bottle now. Like, it's insane. I don't understand. Like, and I mean, they have to know it's just the same, you know, probably water that comes out of their sink, or, you know, or whatever. Like, it's like, it's just crazy that people like just that it, it's, you know, the amount of single use plastic is really like disturbing, you know? Um, and there's obviously a time in the blank, I'm going to ban all plastic. And it's like, I don't know. I kind of like having surgery. So like, you know, I'm kind of cool with some single use, you know, like, you like surgery, my life, you know, I mean, you I like can being, be into whatever you want. I like being alive, <laughs> you know, so, um, you know, there's just, you know, there's obviously times and places for stuff, but it is, it is really crazy. And it's never more apparent than like a disaster when people just, it's the only way that like, they just needed these bot. It's, it's crazy, you know, like fill a bathtub, you know, we have a 350 gallon tank that we filled, you know, um, it's. It's nuts. Uh, there, there is a story. Well, uh, before also, we get, go ahead. Uh, I was just say before we get off of price gouging uh, too much that um, that I really like, and it's kind of has a lot of like facets to it, like uh, some of the stuff we were talking about. But this was the uh, last big one here. That was uh, Irma, and it I'm pretty sure this was Irma, and like it did a lot of damage in the Keys. So you know the Florida Keys. There's one road like in and out. And people were bringing in generators, you know, to sell. And the local government was only letting businesses from the Keys sell generators there so nobody could bring them in. So it was going to take like, you know, I don't know, whatever time, a week or something for them to get any generators, you know, there, you know, from another place by those businesses. So it's just like, it's, it, it just, it sucks all around because like, it's already a, it's already a shitty situation, you know, but you don't even have the option to buy said generator if you want, if it's price gouged or not or elevated above, you know, whatever, you know, just because they just won't allow you to do it. So, you know, like what you're saying, it's already it's already a tainted product, you know, and then they got to come in and they just got to s- step on it again. You know, <laughs> it's yeah, always going to well, make it worse, worse every step of the way. And and see, here's the thing, because, you know, I get where you're coming from mm-hmm. about people got to drink it out of bottles. But like, for instance, Flint, Michigan, you know, or there's many places in Texas or Red Hill um, affected areas in Oahu, or there's this area off the coast of Washington. Humans are fucking up all water supplies, mm-hmm. basically. And that's just here, like the the. For instance, the uh, the Texaco oil spill, where they had to work like really fucking hard in order to get like any sort of legal action done, and then the guy who prosecuted Texaco, um, he, he, like the guy who went against them, uh, got literally jailed and arrested by a corporate lawyer, like a, a lawyer owned by Chevron, um, because. <laughs> he he went against a court that was inherently corrupt and that court which was inherently corrupt had an inherently corrupt judge that was bought by the oil companies um and this was considered okay because he's now in jail after having served a huge amount of a house um arrest sentence already um because he dared to go against these people who killed like over a hundred thousand tribal people and fucking basically wiped out their tribe. It was a, an act of genocide. And people still, like, support Chevron. They still uh, go to their gas stations. And so people are supporting the slow demise of the planet. Um, and what was hilarious is that Texaco's excuse for it was that, like, I think it was Texaco, was that, like, 
you know, hey, no, this water is actually better now. You know, put it in, like put it in your food and on your body. It it, it has vitamins in it. Um, and the the people Oil vitamins. did that. Yeah, the one well, the people did that because they had no other choice because this was their only water source. Mm -hmm. So they had no other choice but to do it. And because of the burn pits and the oil spills, um, their water had been so contaminated that it was slick like a sludge. And they kept on fucking dying of cancer and growing with birth defects when they were born. And they had slowly wiped out this tribe which had existed there for a really fucking long time. That is fundamental aggression. So the corporate aggression is baked into the system. That's the same corporate aggression that's stealing water from Mexico and a huge amount of other places because those places had the audacity to exist downstream of uh, a place where they could put a dam and control the water supply so that they could sell people, um, you know, mountain water, um, which would have been the same as it came from a tap. And then eventually when that slowed down because people started to say, hey, yeah, this is fucked up. you got to give us more of our water. They started to just bottle it at tap sources while still bottling it there. So then there was less water in the water table. So they just keep doing stuff like this, stealing from like people because effectively they, they you know, are controlling nature and preventing nature from existing where it was causing desertification and loss of 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 foliage which causes mudslides which causes carbon release which causes a huge amount of problems um you know all these mega corporations are fucking up the planet and like so the water sources are extremely tainted you want to talk florida like I, I've I've heard so many stories about Florida waste treatment, big settling ponds for like actual radioactive material in neighborhoods, um, you know, big, big waste pools um, th for like treatment plants that like are overflowing already and that during floods contaminate everything around them, um, you know, so this hurricane and all hurricanes like it are very likely to just fucking cause the water there to be polluted because of the way the state and everybody made it. So then you've got this inherently polluted water, which is terrible for you and will give you cancer and a bunch of other things, um, especially the closer you are to things like those pools. And then you've got these people coming in and saying, yeah, we're going to price gouge. Because the thing you now rely on because of the kinds of people we are and support on a regular basis, um, those people, um, you know, fucked your shit up and now you need this. So now you're going to pay me more than you would have paid Walmart because I'm a cunt. That's what most of it is. I'm going to say most like because all you have to do is be like over 50 percent to be most. Then it's then it's a tax. <laughs> I say it's not this be it's a tax on people not being prepared, you know, because they could have had that water already. You live in Florida. You should have. It's not a don't be poor thing. It's like my rant last episode. It's, you know, you need to be ready for this. And it's also just unfortunately reality of city life, you know, because they rely on these kinds of water treatment things, which suck and could probably be better. But it is, um, you are absolutely right, though. That is, like, one of the biggest, like, actual, in my opinion, like, permanent damage kind of things that come from these storms is they go into these cities where, you know, the the water systems in these cities are, fuck, 100 years old. You know, in most cases, they're so outdated. They're so terrible. And it floods over. And once it gets over to a certain point, I mean, how many times just so much raw sewage has been dumped into Tampa Bay? when there's a big storm because of St. Pete's water or Tampa, you know, whatever is it's awful. You know, obviously people aren't drinking Tampa Bay water. Anyhow, it's salt water. Right. But, um, but, but yeah, I mean, there it's just the reality of the situation when these things happen, which, which they do. So, you know, um, if somebody needs to drink water, which 
It is funny that these people never drink water anyhow, you know, because they're unhealthy and drink soda all the time and, and turn into these rabid water needing things. But yeah, it's just a preparedness thing, you know, at that point. Well, and, and, that, and that's I'm, my bitch I on mean, that. So then if you need it when it's not fucking around, you know, because you didn't have it, it costs more to get it there. You know, <laughs> like I get I get extent. all the background you're talking about. I totally get that. But, you know, the you know, the reality is me going and bring it, which I don't even know how much that happens because the. You know, the real price gouging probably happens when the, you know, the government buys the bottles of water and brings them in and gives them to people for free because the government's probably paying, you know, 100 times what they're actually worth from whatever vendor or minority vendor that they get them from, you know, so then well, everybody else really so, gets gouged too. So I... I can see where you're coming from on that. Sorry, I, I don't mean to. But, I'm just passionate. I'm not trying to argue with you about any of this. <laughs> if I, if I well, sound heated, I'm not. I just. <sighs> well, the, so the thing that days. I can bring up, though, is that we just recently had the single greatest wealth transfer in history. And we had the Great Reset monolithizing power, like in concentrating it in the hands of mega corporations and away from the people. So like oh, yeah. if you had a small business and you were trying to live the American dream and be prepared for this sort of disaster, you might have had to dip into your pantry because the like economic disaster hit you first. So what about those people? Like because that's like a huge amount of people. And that's the reason that addiction uh, rates and suicide rates and all these rates fucking skyrocketed because mm -hmm. like the 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 general state of things to begin with was oppressive and then you add to the fact that like uh, at, like the oppression adds to the to the fact that like the existing environment regardless of the recent uh pandemic and and all associated like tyranny um was already bad and already had things like Chevron's Texaco thing and all that sure. stuff. And and it sort of becomes obvious that the system has fucked over a certain group of people as a consequence of the system existing. And maybe that's the problem and not their lack of preparedness in it's, some of these cases. Right. But I mean, that's there's always I mean, no matter bef before the Great Reset, I mean, all there's always these like, yeah, I mean, that that happens and some people are going to be like, you know poorer you know but that's still there's still the reality of people who are going to bring in supplies that they need you know are might want to make a buck i mean i don't work for free you know most of the jobs that i do it doesn't mean i don't do charity stuff it doesn't mean i don't help people you know but all that stuff aside it's still like i mean if nobody's motivated to do it then those people aren't going to have water you know doesn't mean that it's not wrong all that other stuff that happened you well, know i'm not saying this isn't a this isn't a fuck you don't be poor thing you know there's always gonna be people who are less prepared and there's a lot of people who donate out of the goodness of their hearts you know bring supplies to them for free there are a lot of people that do that you know and that's fine and i encourage that you know um but i also just don't i'm not gonna demonize somebody who they, I could still think they're an asshole, but you know, I probably won't. I mean, if they're charging ten dollars a bottle of water, that's fucking insane, you know. But if they're bringing but, in supplies to sell, then I don't have a problem with that. Here's the question, though: bringing mm -hmm. in from where, and is moving the freight from that area which needs it already to another area so that you can sell it, uh, is is that adding additional cost and being worse for the economy? Is that trying to centrally plan economic recovery post disaster from the perspective of a price gouger who wants to increase his own profit and hasn't looked into the territories and regions and what they actually need? Is he doing it because they need it or is he doing it because he wants to make a buck? Because if it's from the prior perspective, then the price would be as low as possible and it might not even be gouging at that point. And he would be able to like reckon with the fact that he shouldn't take too much stock from the, from the store because otherwise that store won't have the stock for people to just buy it at the normal price and they won't be able to anyway. And they'll be forced into the hands of a price gouger or is about him it just bringing that? it from somewhere that isn't disaster ridden. Is that what you're talking about? Well, no, I mean, I'm, I'm talking about, bringing it from anywhere to anywhere else mm -hmm. because let's just say let's just you say, say about like, any product not even in a disaster anytime you go to a store and buy something you could say that well where did this you know come from what what pro what what profit margin makes it immoral 
you know, except to buy and sell not, an item. Except that it's usually not bought out like that. It's usually not bought out in bulk like that so that it can be taken somewhere else. It's usually just bought what somebody needs for their shopping trip. That's why there's usually full shelves. And that's why during a disaster, there's empty shelves because there's a run on the market. And mm -hmm. there's a run on the market while everybody scrambles to get exactly one or, you know, the small amount they need while the people who have money from whatever action, unethical or ethical, um, prior to the thing go in there so that they can buy out more than they need so that they can sell it elsewhere. I don't think that the majority of those people are like looking at economic conditions in the area and trying to do what's best for the area. I don't think most of those people are magnanimous or charitable. I think those people sure. are doing it. Be I, I think those people are doing it because they want to make the profit and that's literally it. And that's why they don't care that they're increasing the price artificially because they're trying to centrally plan an aspect of economic recovery and they are becoming a de facto monopoly on that resource. So for even from like an economic calculation perspective, most of these people aren't doing what they should be for the best like result. They're doing it because they want to make money. And it shouldn't be treated as something noble like a lot of libertarians do when they're doing it so that they can make money and, you know, oftentimes fucking over the same people that could have gotten a much better deal if they hadn't touched the product to begin with. Like, they're just basically just taking it at that point because they know they're going to get the money back if people have to go to them. And if people have to go to them because the shelves are empty, because they went there, they won't be able to get it for the normal price because that's how the economy works. Um, oh, okay. So I, I guess I'll say this. I'll just for, for my thoughts on this um, is like, if, if somebody's buying it from the location where people are needing it at that moment because of a disaster, then just to stand outside and sell it for more or whatever figurative form of that, that is, that's definitely an asshole move. Um, if, if somebody is getting supplies from a location where there is not a run on them and freighting them, them in to, you know, supply them to people who need them, then that's, I'm just fine with that. Um, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean they're causing a shortage somewhere else, depending on where they're, maybe they're getting from wholesale, maybe it's the company themselves. I don't know. Um, I'm not saying that somebody is exceptionally an awesome person. I just think that's just business and that's market working and that's getting supplies to where people need them. Um, people will probably well, pay right. what they value them at at the time. Um, I'm not saying putting a value judgment on good or bad, but I think people getting supplies when they need them is fine. I don't have some big hatred and uh, somebody doing that bringing something in bottled water is one thing but there's also lots of other things you know that people might need and you know i th i think that when they i think if you try to do things like price controls on items that are in high demand at times which is what governments do to try to prevent price gouging um i don't think that that is a good response to that i don't think that helps people generally um i think it puts restrictions right. on market market transactions so again i'm not trying to put a value judgment on this or that but you know i again if somebody i'm, knew, I'm mostly if, responding yeah. to the libertarians who do because like every time i bring up price gouging they say it's like inherently good and and or fine and it's absolutely not and also um you know they they ignore all the things that i just said sure. like and say that that like you know, because I, I say this every single time I bring this up and it does not matter to these people. I've been unfriended and unfollowed and disrespected by so many right libertarians because they mm -hmm. decided that they wanted to, you know, defend this sort of thing. And they don't recognize mm -hmm. that, that there's more than one way to price control and that a lot of the time price gouging. And I'll just say most because I think that's the case. Most of the time, price gouging is a form of price control. It's I'm going to artificially increase the price so that I can get in on this. And I don't care about anybody but myself in this transaction. So so then can we. Uh, OK, so then here, here's always where things are like so definition then. Right. So are we going to say like, OK, if it's let's say you buy a product at one place, bring it into somewhere else where it's in need. And let's say a reasonable profit margin. I don't, let's just say 10%, whatever, you know, let's say that's a reasonable profit margin in a normal business day. Okay. On uh, a normal, whatever, you know, situation. Um, 
Yeah. But if you do that same act, but hey, this is a disaster and people need it. So you're jacking that profit margin to 25% instead of the typical 10. That that's taking advantage of a situation where people are suffering in order to make more money. And something like that would be more considered gouging than just performing a service. Well, am I, right, am I reading you the, at least, at least basically? Yeah, because like the thing is that when when people... Stores know how much freight they need generally. Um, and if you take the, the, the stuff from the store and sell it to another place, you're, I don't think most of these people are running inventory at the store, doing demographic research, asking any questions at all. I think these people are doing it because they think they can make a buck. You know, I don't think sure. they're trying to say that this place needs it. So we're going to do the work that they need. Um, and I don't think they're holistic about the reason the need exists to begin with. And also like, you know, and I'm not saying all of them, by the way, I'm just saying like most of them. Um, and I'm willing to make that like assumption because of what I understand of the situation, but like also, um, there are so many disasters now and there's a disaster, a new disaster every week. And, um, it's totally not caused by, by heart. And it's totally not caused by any sort of weather modification or, you know, cloud seeding or, you know, any sort of uh, geoengineering. The the elites never do that. And it's not like they constantly talk about doing that and then call anybody who talks about what they talk about an insane conspiracy theorist. Um, so it's it's, you know, none of that. None of that is happening, of course. But uh, totally accidentally totally as a result of uncontrolled natural reactions to the absolutely not manipulated by central banking and evil statist corporate um, interests. Um, there's more disasters now than there have been like ever. There's like forest destroying fires on the regular. There's hurricanes on the regular. There's more earthquakes than ever. The, the ice caps are melting the you know th there's smog everywhere there's uh the great pacific garbage patch and more being contributed to it every time the u.s ships more trash overseas only to end up in their rivers flowing down to the ocean um you know there's more oil spills everywhere, including the one from Nord Stream 2, which the U.S. absolutely didn't do in order to sabotage relations with Russia, which is definitely uh, not a thing that happened because Russia did it and we should automatically blame them without evidence, even though they could just turn it off if they wanted to. Um, they definitely blew up their own pipeline. Believe the mainstream media on that. They never lie. You know, all of these things um, are, are ramping up. And the world is getting destroyed at breakneck speed. And I feel like there's, you know, less opportunity for people to prepare if they're living hand to mouth on an intentionally destroyed economy, which is being destroyed so that they can transition onto a new global currency of CBDC and keep people indebted to a system like against which they would normally revolt so that they can't do that so that they're dependent and they won't revolt because they can't eat and they can't feed their kids etc i think the system is fundamentally anti-prepper because they want people yeah. in such a constant state of regular panic and uh and need that they can't prep to begin with i don't have a significant prep you know i don't make a whole lot a month um I'm prepping in skills and understanding so that I can mm -hmm. survive anyway, but I'm certainly not prepped. You know, um, if, if, if we get enough subscribes to our patrons, maybe that'll change or stars as they call them, I guess, you know, y'all can hit up the donation links to help us out if you want. But like the point is He's superstar that, yeah, right. <laughs> um, but like the point is that this is a, a fundamentally anti prepping environment mm -hmm. and so to say that this environment is like you know is to say that the people who are in, in this environment aren't prepped and that means that they deserve what they get 
to me seems like a callous way to phrase it and approach the situation. And it's a thing I see in way too many libertarian libertarian circles. And I should really just stress libertarian because a lot of these people will go fash real quick as soon as yeah. the shit hits the fan or any situation comes up. So yeah, I, I think um, I think it's just something to remember is that we live in an evil world. It's rigged against the common person. You know? Sure, sure. Um, and I, I want to say, like you said a few minutes ago, about like the, the libertarians who are very, you know, like, like, like I said earlier, there's, there's sometimes it's like you're not wrong, you're just an asshole kind of thing. It's like, it's like, dude, like I, I get it, but like that's not just because. Okay, this it's what kind of kept me off of libertarianism when I was first dabbling in liberty a while back was it seemed like they just suck billionaire dick. A lot of times, mm -hmm. uh, pardon the crassness, but it's like, I don't do that. You know what I mean? Like I voluntary, you make a lot of money selling stuff people need. That's great. Whatever, you know, but like, um, but like, yeah, I just didn't, I, they, they did, there was, they, they couldn't really, there wasn't much of a deal. It was, if it was, if you make money, no matter what, it's good, you know? And it's like, no, it doesn't mean like it's good, you know? And it might be. The way the world works, it might be reality, but, you know, I'm not going to say it's good. It might be better than this other alternative, but I'm not going to say it's good, right? Whatever the situation. So I uh, I totally feel you on that. And it is it is tough to get a prep going. Um, so I hope I don't come off sounding callous with the way I was just saying that. But it is the fundamental reality of living and surviving is that, you know, you need food, you need water, you need, you know, thing. There's some stuff yeah. you need, you know. So um, what what I'll what I'll do because it's something that we've been working on and I've sort of been working with friends of mine who have basically no prep to be like let's get you there um I'll do a, I'll do a small thing about it a way to like start and it's 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 really easy and it's something you can just you know you build to it's you know you have a couple days worth of supplies and then after a couple months you might have a week's worth you know and you build up and it's sort of a way that you can do it and it works into your routine with your normal eating habits and you sort of do it without really paying much attention or having to invest much because like i understand like times are tough you know um obviously uh and, and we're, all, we're all going through some shit and some people are a heck of a lot worse off than me um but it's you know it's especially with things getting well, worse you know you gotta that, you gotta be prepared man you just gotta you know well, how about how about like you know a, a series like yeah I'll 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 shoot you a title um in 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 a text here like while while we're recording because I don't want to reveal this and have people steal a, a potentially awesome brand for or for uh, for like your future projects here at Agnex but like I feel like you could just have a series like where you go over uh basics of prepping. And uh, that could be like, you know, mm -hmm. like the, the, the gardening thing could be a part of that. And then the broader stuff could just be like yeah. the occasional 15 minute video yeah. on how to do stuff. I want to, and especially because there's so many, there's so many people who like I've learned from their content that it's like, there's a lot of content out there on this stuff. If you really want to do some deep dives, but man, I can, you know, I can give you some quick, you know, some real quick, like nice, easy, easy things. So I definitely want to uh, definitely uh, want to uh, do that for sure. But uh, but yeah, man, it's uh, it is important. Uh, oh man, there's there's something else I was gonna say. Mm. Uh, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Sorry, we'll move we'll move on. Uh, it, it'll come to me at the, it'll come uh, to me at the worst time, <laughs> right? I I shot you a message in the in the group message on on right, Keybase. Cool. Um, yeah, like the whole thing is is one of those. I to be clear. What I'm trying to say isn't that prepping itself is oh. a hoarding. Yeah, no, uh, no, no. Go. Okay, I'm sorry. I just remember what I was going to say. Um, yeah, no, because, of course, we discussed this last time. Prepping isn't because you're buying in times when there are plenty, and then you're actually acting yeah. as a battery, you know, what have you. Um, but when you're saying we live in an anti-prepping, like, society, like, yes, and that's, like, with the whole, like, like the Federal Reserve existence, you know, like, the, the whole time preference. It moves everybody's time preference from – we don't save, right? It's it's best to spend. So that's inherently anti-prepping. You know, it's yeah. Well, I'll just buy it when I need it. You know, and we're we are. I mean, we are spoiled. That any time of year, you can go down to the grocery store and get like any type of food that you shouldn't be able to get that time of year. You know what I mean? It's it's when and whenever like when 2020 happened and it was the first time in my lifetime I've ever started like going to the store and like stuff's not there. That like I'm just used to yeah. buying and it was just 
weird. And I mean, it's petty stuff. It was nothing like that I needed to survive, right? My particularly particular brand of Starbucks energy drink, you know, wasn't on the shelf for three months. You know what I mean? It's like, oh my God, you know, but it's, it's, it's nothing. It's so stupid compared to the stuff people deal with. But it's like, it does make you really realize pretty quick, though, how like delicate all this is. <laughs> you, know? You, you know, I'm not sponsored by by this brand, but if you do want to sponsor me, mutant, feel free because this is what I get, and it means <laughs> that I don't have to worry about that. Like, this is a ten dollar bottle of caffeine, and it's two hundred forty cups of coffee, so you'll get a lot better price if you're willing to go with something like that. And it kicks like a mule because it's like pharmaceutical grade. Yeah, yeah, like so. My thing is. If you get like enough for your prep during, you know, the good season and you're relying on your prep, that's not what I mind. What mm -hmm. I mind is when it does hit and people actually need it, but the people who want to make money are like going and raiding the shelves. Because like, OK, here's the thing. Economic displacement. That person didn't need to make that money. He could have just done nothing and people would have been better off. Um, and then his excuse, you know, well, somebody was going to do it. Doesn't mean it has to be you. Doesn't mean right, you have right, to be right. unethical. Uh, you know, there, um, there's a, there's some, a market for hitmen. It's not going to be me. Yeah. You know, like, Somebody, <laughs> somebody's going to kill people in the Middle East. So I might as well join the army, yeah. you know. Um, so like that person does that. And then this person has spent, let's say, you know, $20 on a case of, you know, 10 water bottles because their family needs water to survive. Um, and they spent $20 on a 10 pack, but they did that like four times so that they could have enough water to survive. Um, and they now no longer have $80 to spend at the grocery store. Mm hmm. That 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 means that they now have to make a choice. Do I dehydrate or do I starve? Because this person made that choice. So that that choice has radiating effects. And then the store uh, has all that money from that, but they don't have the water on the shelves. So if people say, hey, there's no water on the shelves, that store is going to lose business. So that store is going to take a hit. And if it's a small business and not a Walmart, that matters, you know, there's a lot of things that are like radiating effects that I think a lot of people who defend price gouging don't consider is all I'm saying. Let me throw another, um, I'm, we, God damn, we've been on this for a while. We should probably move on, but I'm having fun with this. Um, one more hypothetical. Okay. So let's say somebody, um, and doing this with their own money as a business, as a business thing. Okay. They have space, let's say a warehouse and they buy in not in times of lack. Okay. They accumulate, you know, supplies, generators or bottles or whatever disaster supplies that people might need and they store them so they're not necessarily being a drain. God, you're going to tell me they still are though because of the whole, everything's wrong from the get-go, <laughs> but they're not necessarily being a drain and they they wait. So they're not they're being in their especially draining. Okay, cool. I can, I can live with that. I can live with that. So they, they post up their, their warehouses in central Florida. They're a response. They can go anywhere in Florida within a day, you know, or a couple hours, whatever. There's a disaster and they can sell their wares then. Um, they don't wouldn't necessarily have to mark them up much because if they're buying them, let's say in bulk or through wholesale means not off store shelves. You know what I mean? They could probably do it for decent price and you you could justify a couple percent higher than it might typically be, but it doesn't have to be exorbitant, right? Um, storage, transportation, et cetera. Um, um, but then they're supplying people with stuff when they need them who people might not have been, you know, prepared or maybe it's not even maybe they were prepared, but their house blew away, you know, with their prep. Right. Um, you know, and now they're living out of a tent, you know, and they need new supplies, you know, so there, there are situations where you could be prepared, I guess, and not even. Um, I don't know. How evil is that? Is that is that a little better? Well, to me, I would say to be a speculator keep... at that point, huh? To me, I would say that it would depend at that point whether or not they were sensitive to the actual needs, whether it was for a need. Because if if it's for a need, mm -hmm. then you you're doing demographic research. You know, you're 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 looking at how poor the people there are normally, what the living standards of people there are normally, um, how the people there are like you know in terms of uh, upward mobility. And, you know, 
uh, class stability normally. Um, you know, all these sorts of things. Um, the pollution that was in the area that time um, before the storm, like sort of wafting all this stuff out of waste collection pools so that everybody can become toxically infected um, normally. If, if, if all these things are being, you know, considered mm -hmm. and they actually know where the need is so that they can provide the, the, the lowest priced while still being able to actually pay their employees so that they can do stupid things like eat and pay bills. Um, then yeah, sure. You know, if you're trying, but mm -hmm. like, you know, my, my, my only point was that a lot of these people aren't trying They're they're pulling their F one fifty up and hoarding supplies so that they can fuck over poor people. That's, Dick that's move. what they're doing. Yeah. Do, do we want to, um, I know you had some other topics. I have a couple other things. I think we could do relatively quickly, um, that sort of relate to disaster response. Um, yeah, go for it. Okay. So, uh, one thing that um you know i'm seeing you know, watching the news and stuff is the the people who do move in with supplies and aid and like one of these groups is like the uh the red cross okay that's one of the big ones that does this um but it got me thinking uh, while i was watching this today about like uh just charities in general and how a lot of them are like just money laundering scams you know and i'm i'm sure you're probably kind of familiar with some of this stuff so i wanted to talk to you um, a, a little bit of, about it um so they're, you know, it's sort of on this topic we've been talking about, about people moving in to help, right, uh, one way or another when there's a disaster. Uh, the, uh, do you know anything about the Red Cross? Are they, are they, are, are, are they a scam or they, do they seem like they legitimately are a good organization or, or what do you think? I mean, Red I don't know Cross much about them. Red Cross is typically fine. The thing is that, you know, what you're dealing with, like, there are sites you can check. Uh, the BBB was one of them. Mm -hmm. um, I was looking at some those... before we started recording, yeah, about some of the yeah, like the... charities in general, like the American Cancer Society or whatever, and it's like, oh, yeah, they're, see, their person makes like a half million dollars a year salary. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. well, <laughs> I mean, that's kind of normal, though. Like, mm -hmm. the, the fact that a CEO makes a large amount, yeah, we live in state capitalism, they're going to. Um but like the whether or not the actual charity because like there's also the there's the fact that yes they shouldn't be living that well off the expenses that are garnered from the poor like you know walmart for instance shouldn't be raking in that much for the for the billionaires that run it because it's like overworking poor people and treating them like shit you know it definitely there's some unethical stuff but like even if you distributed uh that that billion like let's say they have a billion net worth whoever this random like hypothetical person is at the head of this charity let's say they're a billionaire not just a multimillionaire but a billionaire they distribute one dollar to every american and suddenly they're a 350 millionaire so it's like that's one dollar you know two dollars they now have no money. Mm -hmm. So it's like, what do you, what is the response to that? That isn't just, yeah, make less money. Um, you know, that wouldn't just be like solved by them being a philanthropist. You know, what, why is the system itself not what's being questioned and not whatever arbitrary number? That's where I start to sound sort of rightist, but I'm coming at it from a strictly leftist perspective mm -hmm. here saying that like, so the Can system itself is what's evil and not necessarily people making a lot at the top um, of any given part of it. So, and, 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 and to be honest, um, you know, if they're, I, I feel like if the person does a good job and they, you know, I, okay. I feel like the important number to look at probably with the charity would be how much of every dollar donated makes it to whatever end yes. cause. Right. Because let's say that person, let's say the person makes, five million dollars a year as ceo but they're really good at it and you know by that you know a huge amount of money makes it to the end result and they're actually solving problems right, right? then you could probably justify justify that as they're worth the money it's you know it's the difference between hashtag black lives matter and at black lives matter because hashtag black lives matter is awesome 
you're talking about police brutality. You're saying it primarily affects minorities per capita. And you're saying that shit needs to stop. Mm -hmm. Good. Then you form an organization at Black Lives Matter and they start lobbying for politicians, going to ex executive dinners, and buying mansions. Mm -hmm. Not so good. Right, right. You know, so uh, the question is whether or not the money is actually going to jack fucking shit. And then I guess the other one is, are they, you know, so I'd say with some, like, let's say some cancer charities, they might not, solving cancer might not be in their best interest, Right. Uh, you see, um, this is brought to my attention on another podcast, but you look at like the American Diabetes Association and like the recipes they have on their websites that are supposed to be diabetic friendly are like dessert, you know, like it's not mm -hmm. diabetic friendly stuff, you know, and it's like, well, I guess they might not be in the interest of actually solving diabetes, though, right? Because they might be all be out of jobs. So you can also look at what they actually do with the money, I suppose, as well. You know, one of my favorite um sort of comparisons on, uh, I will call them charities. I don't know if these are technically charities, but it's, um, Again, being an environmentalist is the Nature Conservancy versus the Sierra Club, you know? Um, <laughs> Fuck the Sierra Club. Yeah, exactly. The Nature Conservancy, they do some of this as well. They're not perfect, but, like, the Sierra Club, like, all their money that you give to them goes for, like, uh, lobbying and shit like that. You know, it's government action. Political for, ads. And, and, yeah, and then all for all their rich donors to go on hikes and stuff. The Nature Conservancy... Yeah. They they do some political stuff. I'm not pleased with that. They do some of it, admittedly, but a lot of what they do is they buy land. They conserve land. Sometimes they sell their land if it's a good deal for them to buy more land in other places, you know. So they they buy and conserve and act, you know, with the money that uh, that you donate to them in a lot of instances. So like I'm, you know, like I'm much more on board with them versus the Sierra Club. You know, um, I'm not trying to tell anybody what to donate or anything like that so please don't say it. this is an endorsement well i thing. am but just in, actually in, in, by comparison though i will tell you don't donate to any of these people mm -hmm. talk to your neighbors people don't fucking do that they everybody's so insular and stuck in their goddamn phones these days nobody's saying shit to jack fucking anybody and if they do people respond with hostility instead of any of the openness necessary to actually have a community because community has died in favor of globalist statism. And so don't give to these charities. Um, know your neighbors, know, know the area well enough that you can say, yeah, they, they need that and we're going to help them with that rather than relying on an external price gouger to come in and say, you know, this is what these people need, um, you know, and also if you do give to a charity, so there's BBB, they've got a wise giving alliance. I think that's what it's called. They've got, you know, um, it's like charity navigator, charity watch and guide star. Um, and like, so there's all these things that you can, and then ask around, you know, it's okay to tweet something out saying, Hey, is this like charity legit? It's okay to form your own charity <clears throat> by f like doing a GoFundMe or something like that. Or I prefer not GoFundMe because they suck asshole and they rob the Canadian truckers. Go get funding uh, is a good choice yeah. because okay. it's what we're running our documentary fundraiser on if you wanted to support that. And it's also um, what uh, like it offers the lowest fees that I've seen which means that they're not trying to super profit off of like other people's disasters to begin with. Um, so you get more, you get more flexibility, you get PayPal payments and Stripe, which means you can use debit cards and PayPal both. Mm -hmm. um, you know, there's options like that. I prefer go get funding. I, I, I'm not going to say give, send, go, because that's pretty much just Republicans that use that. Um, so, our, My whole um, goal when I'm talking right. about these things is to say decentralization is the best. So if you want my advice where I'm telling people what to throw money at, I would say know the actual situation on the ground well enough to know where things are actually necessary instead of trusting any central planner with it. Not a price gouger and not the Red Cross. <laughs> any, any or FEMA. Like big, like, FEMA especially. Like, big, like, um... like FEMA's great because they've got REX84 or sorry, yeah, 84, I think it was, which was discussed in games like Deus Ex and uh, discussed by conspiracy theorists for a long time, where they're just going to round up hundreds of thousands of people during disasters who are already on lists of, you know, suspected terrorists, etc., and put them in camps. That's a real order. 
RDX 84, fucking look it up before you call me a stupid conspiracy theorist. Um, and you can look it up. It's on Wicca fucking Pedia. It's not, you don't have to dig hard. You don't have to go to alexjones.info in order to figure this shit out. And you can find out that, like, a lot of the disaster management is just a cover for, like, you know, more government. So, hey, go ahead. You were going to say words, and I cut you off, I think. <laughs> okay. Um, I, uh, um, I like, there's this, uh, are you familiar with Kiva? K-I-V-A? They do, like, um, um I'm not. They, they do, like, these, uh, they do loans. And they do them in like the U.S. For, like business stuff. We got a Kiva loan once, so like these interest-free loans. Uh, and then I, I don't want to call it donate, uh, but I guess donate uh, to a lot of them in like other like countries. So it'll be like whatever. Uh, I'm not going to be racist and mispronounce some foreign name, but somebody from some country I can't pronounce, you know, needs. They want three hundred dollars to buy livestock to start a livestock business, or for a new thing for their cab, or a push cart to sell hot dogs, or whatever, you know. And um, so they get the dough together, and then they pay it back over time. So uh, it's kind of cool because, like, I, you know, like let's say once a month do twenty five bucks, and then every so often I get money back to reuse. So I kind of like it because it's not like you're just giving money to somebody and it's like, Oh, I hope they, you know, whatever. It's like, you get to give that same money or make it useful, you know, again and again. And sometimes I've had times where the repayment doesn't happen, you know, for whatever reason, you know, they don't pay it back, something, whatever. So that, that does happen. Um, in the U S they do it for more, like it's a little more like tighter, like businessy kind of stuff, um, for their, for their U S ones, but for the foreign ones, it's kind of cool. Now there is something where like they, there's a person who sort of manages the loan over there. So I don't know. That's where I'm kind of like, I don't know if that's somebody who unnecessarily taken a slice or if they are actually performing a worthwhile service um, at making this, you know, making this happen. Um, they submit videos and stuff, which is kind of cool. Like if you're familiar with Donor C, uh, Greg Glyer, uh, but he got shot or something recently and died, uh, the guy who ran that. Um, but uh, <clears throat> but that was a thing where they, you know, you show videos of the thing that you helped them buy actually existing. Right. So if you're donating yeah. to this, you know, a, a toilet in this third world country, you would get to see it like existing. So, you know that, hey, it happened. Uh, ideal. And most of just reusing the same video. Obviously, there were loopholes there, but it should be better. So I think well, I think uh, things like that are really cool. But I do really like Kiva. Uh, but those are my maybe questions that's, about the foreign one. Maybe that's a market that could open up is to do a DAO structure for something like Kiva instead of US dollars. Maybe you could open up your decentralized Kiva, the Kiva or whatever, and you could have like um, a DAO instead mm -hmm. where like everything is automatically fulfilled. Yeah. 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 That's cool. I, I like the model of, a, do that a, of lot. a loan, you know, instead of a, instead of a donation, I, I feel like you get, I feel like you get better bang for the, the money that's given in that regard. Yeah, but that well, might just be my that, inner capitalist. <laughs> but from that perspective, a smart contract would be much better because it would just auto fulfill at a certain point. Sure, sure. So yeah, you could you could you could do a DAO for that particular, like a smart contract for that <clears throat> particular loan, and you could have a system set up where people could just sign up for the loan, and it would be automatically fulfilled by a DAO with some like you know, some, some ETH or some die or some, you know, BCH. Oh yeah. P potentially like that could be a thing. I'm not saying like, cause I don't know anything about Kiva. I'm not saying Kiva is bad, but if you do think that there's a possibility for fraud, this would reduce that possibility. <laughs> it always <because> is. Be, <laughs> this would reduce that possibility because yeah. everything would be visible on chain. Yeah. Yeah. So, so. Um, so okay. I, I guess, yeah, I guess that's um, I guess that's about all I had. Uh, the only other thing, uh, one note I had is um, selling water. I always buy. Talk about um, charity and selling water and price gouging and all that. If there's a homeless dude or homeless dude selling water on the side of the road, I always buy two bottles from them. I don't typically yeah. give people dough, but if they're selling water, I'd like cold water. Get over here. You're hustling. You're going. You're buying that water. I know. You know, putting it on ice. Fuck yeah. Also, power on. Also. Um, what I'll say is this, I'm about to get one of these, uh, as soon as I get paid, um, I'm going to get a life straw. Everybody should get a life straw because yes, agreed. If, if, if you're in Florida 
and suddenly all your water is Florida water and it's bad because it has all these contaminants in it, you could solve a lot of that problem on your own by getting something like a life straw and just mm -hmm. having a, a filtration bag or just drinking from your tap, but having less chance of being killed by it. So do that. Have that. That's a good thing to have. Yes. Yes. That is you know, get it, get it lacking in is my water, my water prep. Yeah. Cause like, I mean, you don't need to buy bottles of water and be worse for the environment eventually. Like what was uh, that? Here's me being a little bit cynical just to counterbalance all my bleeding heart bullshit earlier. Here's me being a little bit cynical about the user end. You complain about climate change the rest of the year. And then during a disaster, you buy all this plastic and disposable bullshit. Mm -hmm. You could do better. Mm -hmm. Bigger jugs, if nothing else, instead of all the little jugs, get bigger jugs. <laughs> you know, it's or more just efficient. You know? A life straw hooked up to a <laughs> yep. cut up. Like so, what what you do? You take a life straw. You you modify it to hook up to the bottle uh, to the bottom of a bottle, mm -hmm. and then you you um you run water through like this this normal sized water jug or one of those big old like water barrels like water co cooler barrels that you can just like awkwardly slump onto the water cooler and spill a little bit of it every time um i don't think that ever doesn't happen i've never seen somebody successfully not do that at all um but anyway point is you can take one of those and you can like cut the bottom edge of it off so that you can pour uh, or just like cut a hole in it so that you can pour um, some dirty like swamp ass river water into that and then it filters through the life straw eventually into another one and then you pour that uh, into a cooking vessel so that you can boil it and get rid of all the leftover bacteria and then you've got enough drinking water for you and your entire family for about 80 cents mm -hmm. 80 cents a day so do that instead of going and supporting a price gouger fuck that piece of shit be like self-reliance your way out of it don't just succumb to it that's what i'll say about it that's me getting my cynical edge in while still being my <laughs> my my but, but, but like yeah but you're right that's I, I sound like a is... communist agitator when i talk like this but like you know <laughs> but, there's but no, me, I mean, there's me was... throwing my little cynicism into it uh, well that's funny it's, yeah i mean it's like, like, I mean, I, like, again, because I totally feel you, man. Like, shit's hard. It can be hard to get some of that shit together. But, you know, the, the world, the world's tough out there, man. You got to rise above. That's what we're all about, you know, or, you know, it's got to do it. Better late than never, I suppose. What else we got? Yeah. Man? We're, 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 shoot, I think we're over an hour now. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, this, this could be an episode. We'll, we'll talk about all the other bullshit that, uh, that, 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 that we were going to discuss. Um, uh, monday and also you and i are going to be interviewing uh, a couple of mo mothers on uh on thursday so that's two days from now but it'll be much further down the road because we've got a bunch of backlog to upload we'll be better about that in the future by the way y'all um we're gonna try and churn through all of those this week and get all the files listened to and make sure everything's integral and then uh we'll we'll try to have everything posted so that we can get back on track because we want to pump out content for you guys. So this we month some... is gonna be a month, huh? I was say we got some interviews coming up um yes. too. So it'll be uh more than uh more than just us yelling at you for uh <laughs> for an hour. We're getting to, yeah. getting back to some interviews and everything too, so we'll get some nice fresh, nice fresh shit. Fresh blood. Yeah. Um right. so yeah. oh you have I never shown you that voice? I'm pretty sure I have. I probably heard it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah just, it's the appropriate I, month for it. I have, I have this stupid big German Scottish like throat and sinus system. So like I've got the voice that can like go really deep and really high up if I need to. But I've also got the really deep this way, and I can speak like this forever. And it doesn't hurt. It's not uncomfortable. I could just sound like this forever if I wanted to. But I don't. I get to cough just sounds... listen to it. <laughs> yeah. I could do two metal and death metal very easily. Anyway, um, it's it, it was funny when I found that out because like, oh yeah, that's another voice I can do. That's fucking stupid. Um, I sound mm -hmm. like cartoon demon. But yeah. No mods. No no hands. Look, mod, no hands. Um, yeah, that 
<sighs> cool. <laughs> agorist, agorist summoning the Antichrist. That's <laughs> anyway. Uh, yeah, go to Agorist Acre Seeds. Use code Nexus. Go to subscribe star. Support Agorist Nexus there. You know, like th- there's so many ways that you can support what we do, and you, you have lots of reasons to do it. And uh, Dag, like it- if you could for a moment talk about like the kind of content they'll be able to see from you on Odyssey eventually. Uh, yes, uh, I'm. I'm working on it. I read computer fiasco beforehand, but it's coming. Um, we're we're gonna get some gardening stuff. We're gonna get some homesteading stuff. Some animal husbandry. Uh, I'm like I said earlier. There's a lot of this content already out there, so I'm gonna keep it. I'm gonna keep it brief. Uh, unless there's something that we really get a discussion about, and you guys want me to dive in deep on, I'm more than happy to do it. But I'm gonna try and keep keep it brief, man. It'll just help help you guys jump ahead if you're looking to get into homesteading. If you're looking to get into prepping. Uh, you know, I want to just help get you a head start. Um, maybe we'll get into some firearms. I really want to do some lock picking stuff and some entry stuff with you guys. Uh, cause I've been really having a lot of fun with that. Uh, again, I'm going to, I'm going to promote a lot of other people's content that do it better than me, but I want to help you guys with a, some brief, let's get into it. Let's get our hands dirty. Let's, let's get started. If there's something that you guys pick up and really want to get into, we can either dive deeper or again, I'll be more than happy to help guide you to other sources, uh, for people who are better than me. But um, but yeah, I, I really want to um, I, I, especially after our conversations these last couple of days uh, about um natural disasters and uh, and prepping being so important and you know like like you so like you pointed out today it's you know it's it can be easy to say just stop being poor just have a better prep but it's not always that easy you know for sure so um whatever I can do to help you guys um you know make it happen i want to uh, i want to be able to do so so that's the goal um and otherwise anything any practical skills you guys want i mean we can do like auto repair we can do whatever you know um i i know i know a little about a lot of stuff so i just want to be able to help people out and you know if i can help cut through cuz i mean really what is what is like content like that it's like okay it's i did you know i did homesteading for a decade made a lot of mistakes so let me just show you guys my mistakes and cut those mistakes out of your journey because you're going to make a lot of mistakes and everybody's process and setup is different. So it's just anything I can do to help make a, make you guys' life a little bit easier for, so you can learn from my mistakes. That's what, uh, that's what I want to do. Yeah. We learn more from and I'm our looking failures forward to it. than our successes. Yes. And you'll be able to find that exclusively on Odyssey because it's going to be video content. So you can't really listen to that. So uh, yeah. subscribe to us on Odyssey, throw us a few flames every now and then the more you support us there with reactions like watching videos and d- throwing flame the more we're like able to keep doing this so like that's a free way like if you don't want to do all this stuff where you have to pay like if you're if you're a fellow poor like me um you know like that's a way you could do it for free just saying and uh i don't know if 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 you have a quote we can do yours if you don't i've got one if you got one man let's do it um all right um and remember guys uh agra staker seeds code nexus 20 percent off boom so yeah um the only reason you're still alive is because someone has decided to let you live we owe so much money we're not broke we're broken we're so poor we can't even pay attention so what do you want you want to be famous and rich and happy But you're terrified you have nothing to offer this world, nothing to say and no way to say it. But you can say it in three languages. You're more than the sum of what you consume. Desire is not an occupation. You are simultaneously thrilled and desperate, sky high and fucked. Let's stop praying for someone to save us and start saving ourselves. Let's stop this and start over. Let's go out. Let's get going. That's a KMFDM dogma. Agoras next is out. Peace. Join the revolution starting inside. An instrumental part of a gore worldwide. A gore worldwide. A gore worldwide. Counter economics. Agoras strip. Black market click. Move a quick flip. Can't regulate this. Agoras strip. Black market click. Move a quick flip. Can't regulate this. Ag-